Welcome, my dear, dear friends. It cheers me to see you. In case we haven't met, I'm Stephen Clements, a writer, a gamer, and an appreciator of big brain activities in general. On this channel, I perform dramatic story readings, I provide role-playing game reviews, and I get to talk to interesting people. This Christmas season, we're reading the reindeer-themed smut fest, Vixen, the Untold Story. The true untold story of a beautiful young transvestite reindeer driven mad by desire. Written by a dear, dear friend, Chris Clark, who I interviewed in a previous episode, and I do suggest you go treat yourself and check that out, under the pen name of Hugh Betcha. What he calls a lampoon of tawdry Harlequin romance novels, to me it hits like a reindeer Maury Povich paternity test episode. Prepare yourself for part two of two of this short story, because we're headed Back to the trailer park, or uh, reindeer caves. Vixen, chapter four. The following weeks were some of the happiest of Prancer's young life. Vixen avoided him at sleigh pulling practice, posing so as to subtly show off her body, but doing and saying nothing overt. Prancer quickly realized that the feelings he had for Vixen were not truly love, but were instead merely the lustful inclinations known to every young buck. Besides, he and Rachel were going steady now, and he got along well with her family. He had told Rachel that he loved her, and she had returned that love. Every day after sleigh practice, he would see her. He would take Rachel on long woodland walks out to the field, where they would fly together and to the meadow for dinner. She was always eager for his kisses, but would not allow him further liberties. Prancer found that endearing. Weeks passed. He stumbled into his home cave one day, his lips swollen from a passionate round of necking with the doe, and confronted his father. Dad, he said buckfully, I think I'm in love with Rachel. I'm going to ask her to become my mate. Unexpectedly, his father broke into a broad and toothy grin. My son, this is wonderful news, but don't you think you should hold off for just a bit? Pleased and angry at the same time, Prancer addressed his father sternly. Why wait, Dad? Isn't she the doe you wanted me to mate? She's a fine doe, son, but tomorrow is Christmas Eve. And you don't want to cloud your mind with other matters when you should be concentrating on Santa's mission now, do you? Without realizing it, the weeks had become months, and the day had almost arrived. Elfishly, Prancer glanced up at his father and bashfully replied, it is. I completely lost track of the date. How could I be so? Son, bucks in love are prone to this sort of thing, his father interrupted. Just be sure to keep your mind on the job at hand tomorrow and ask the doe to be your mate on Christmas Day. Prancer could but nod in agreement at his father's wisdom. Prancer got up early that day and spent the morning drilling himself on Santa's commands and practicing his takeoffs and landings. He was confident, focused, and secure in the knowledge that he would acquit himself admirably with the evening's mission. Ready for action, he reported to his appointed place for the start of the Christmas Eve run. Ho, 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 short old Santa, surveying the expectant and eager bucks. We have quite a trip ahead of us. Everyone, get into position in the harness while I load the sleigh with toys for tonight's journey. Ho, ho, ho! Prancer quickly slipped the straps of the harness over his shoulders and meekly accepted the help of the elves as they tightened and adjusted the harness. It seemed only moments before Santa's voice rang out to the team. He brimmed with excitement. This was the mission he had trained his entire life for, the mission that all reindeer dream of undertaking. He was in good physical shape and was one of the select few actually chosen by Santa. His excitement, he knew, was justified. Why did he feel a subtle sexual excitement as well? He realized just in time that Santa had given the command for takeoff. Dash away all! And then they were in the air. The night was a magical mix of twinkling stars, shining snow, and jingling bells. The powerful bodies of his fellow team members strained effortlessly, pulling the sleigh through the beautiful night sky. Exhilarated by the sheer joy of it, Prancer once again regained his composure and bent his efforts with all his will to the task at hand. It was only a strange constriction of the harness. 
in the area of his buck hood that alerted him that the strange feeling of sexual excitement had not abated. What was going on? They made their rounds through several cities, with Prancer continually hoping for some relief from the pressure that continued to build inside of him. He tried thinking of flying, but the mental image of Vixen's body and a variety of explicit poses invaded these visions. He tried to think of his home cave, but Vixen inevitably appeared ready and willing in his sleeping area. He tried to think of Santa, but the image would degenerate. The jolly old elf would remove his red robe, revealing the provocatively posed body of Vixen beneath. Nothing seemed to work. Near the end of the evening, now in literal torture over the continued sexual assault on his senses, that Prancer realized the cause of his ardor. There, before him in the harness was Vixen, and she took every opportunity to raise her tail and waft a breath of attraction scent right under his nose. That bitch! Didn't she realize that tonight was a sacred trust not to be marred by the machinations of some deceitful doe? She would jeopardize Christmas for the sake of her own revenge? She must be made to pay for this outrage! Prancer knew that his torture would be brief, that the real revenge would be his. His level of excitement was such that given the opportunity, he would mount that doe and ride her for the rest of the night. What bothered him most was that by her occasional seductive glance backwards, Vixen was aware of his predicament and even reveled in it. This only fueled his rage. Well, he thought, this sleigh ride wouldn't last forever. And then she'd see who was enjoying themselves, concentrating mightily. He put off thoughts of mating and bent his will to the task at hand. His ardor continued, demanding his attention, but he rose above it, consoling himself with the thought that the sleigh ride would eventually end. For now, he had his duty, but later, it would be time to teach a certain doe a lesson. The night finally ended, and the sleigh came to rest at Santa's workshop. Santa congratulated all of the reindeer before retiring, sleepy but happy to his bed. You all did a fine job tonight, and I'm very proud of you, the jolly old elf chortled. Now go and get some sleep. Sleigh practice begins again in three months. Vixen had already been released from her harness and had disappeared into the woods. Prancer began to wriggle painfully from his harness, and a helpful elf soon came to assist. The cause of Prancer's discomfiture was plain for the elf to see. It looks like we didn't deliver at least one large wooden toy, he chided. Prancer threw the elf a disgusted look, shrugged off the last of his harness, and bolted for the wood. He knew where Vixen was headed. His lust for revenge need be contained only a bit longer. He arrived at the special clearing, breathless and enraged, and there was Vixen, a sardonic grin on her face. I thought you no longer found me attractive, she teased. It was too much. Vixen still wore several pieces of her harness and her prosthetic antlers, but Prancer no longer cared. He ran forward and kicked the recalcitrant doe in her front legs, bringing her to her knees. Before she could protest, he was behind and inside of her. Her cries of pain did not even slow him down. He simply rode her until he was spent. Finishing, he spat into the snow and walked around to face her. You bitch, he snapped threateningly. If you ever pull a stunt like that again, I'll rut you in front of the entire team, and then your secret will be out. You're nothing but a transvestite whore. He spat again and took to the air, headed for home. Shocked and abused, Vixen could make no reply. This was to be a night of love rekindled. Where were the tender words and the promises of eternal love? Why was she... And Prancer, not discussing the future, with plans for fawns and a cave of their own. What had she done wrong? Unable to understand Prancer's reaction, Vixen just lay in the snow crying, trying to comfort the hurts of her torn and bruised body. Chapter 5 the big day had arrived. It had been two months since Christmas, and Prancer had asked Rachel to be his mate. He had not seen Vixen since that fateful night, and felt that he had put the entire affair behind him. His occasional feelings of guilt over the way that he had abused her were pushed aside by both his feelings for Rachel and the betrayal he felt he had suffered at Vixen's hooves. Rachel had agreed to the match, and she and her mother had immediately sequestered themselves, planning eagerly for a large and public wedding. 
They invited all of the other reindeer, and Santa as well. There would be an elf band, mountains of refreshments, and oceans of sweet bran mash. Invitations had to be sent out, flowers ordered, and matching harnesses to be purchased for the bridesmaids. Prancer had been discreetly ushered away, while being admonished to show up for the ceremony or else not show his face, and that had been that. The entire nearby forest had been decorated for the event, and it was the topic of every conversation. Today was the day that they would become buck and doe, mated for life. Prancer spent the morning preening himself, aware that both he and Rachel would be the unique centers of attention that day. He was also supposed to remain indoors, to prevent him accidentally seeing Rachel before the ceremony. There was some silly superstition that to do so was bad luck. Prancer did not believe the superstition, but felt he could go along with it for the sake of the parents and his darling Rachel. After what seemed an eternity, there was a knock at the door. Son, came the voice of Prancer's father, now strangely colored with pride. It's time. Prancer strode forward, through the gathered reindeer, their cheers and wishes for luck ringing like music in his ears. He wore his best harness, and his hooves were highly polished. He walked sedately down the aisle, a broad smile on his face, and approached the master of ceremonies at the front, none other than Santa himself. A big day for you, eh, young buck? Santa chuckled. His comment was interrupted by the appearance of Rachel at the head of the aisle. She was lovely, an absolute vision of doehood. The other reindeer had entwined forest flowers along her neck, and she carried herself with grace and poise. Prancer felt his heart swell within his breast. I would say so, sir, he managed to whisper to Santa. The doe that now stood beside him in front of the other reindeer was a doe to be proud of, gorgeous and refined, the Rachel he knew, but a perfect version of her. He was the luckiest reindeer alive. Son, inquired Santa. Hmm? said Prancer quizzically, and then realizing what had occurred. Oh, uh, I do! And you, Rachel, Santa continued, promise to love Prancer, to ignore the other bucks no matter how attractive to rear his fawns and provide for his household. I do, responded Rachel dreamily. Prancer could barely believe this was happening. Should anyone now object to this union, continued Santa, let them speak now before all assembled or forever hold their peace. A pregnant pause followed this supposedly rhetorical question, interrupted by a sudden commotion at the back of the crowd. Murmurings and the occasional shouted expletive were punctuated by a general disorder as the crowd parted to allow the passage of someone or something. Finally, the last of the reindeer gave way and a large reindeer replete with antlers stumbled to the front of the crowd. I object, stated a demanding and obviously very Pregnant vixen. The assembled reindeer erupted into chaos. Shouts from every direction became a virtual din. Prancer saw his mother faint, his father catching her before she hit the ground. Rachel ran off to the comfort of her father in tears, the flowers around her neck scattering as she ran. Rachel's father glared at Prancer, his anger plain for all to see. You miserable son of a, he began. That's enough, erupted Santa with a voice like thunder. Santa's deep bass voice rang out across the clearing, an indication that he would accept no further comments. All of you maintain your composure. There will be an emergency meeting of the sleigh team at my workshop in 10 minutes. The rest of you just go home. In spite of Santa's warning, the crowd erupted into a chorus of subdued murmuring as the guests prepared to depart. And he's such a nice bug. Doe's wearing antlers? What's next? Shameless hussy. I bet it's not even his. I missed the game for this? Some of the guests even retrieved their gifts from the enormous pile at the front of the clearing. Santa glowered at these deer, but they feigned indifference. Vixen, for her part, sauntered past an obviously crestfallen prancer with an air of smug superiority and strode quickly towards the workshop. Everything was going according to plan. She would have her way and her buck. She did not seem to notice the infuriated glance cast her way by Santa. Prancer watched as the crowd broke up, not without many a sidelong glance in his direction. He was deeply ashamed. Reindeer that mere moments before had been congratulating him and saying what a swell buck he had become were now avoiding him as though he had Lyme's disease. 
Rachel was nowhere to be seen, and Vixen had cast him a look that bespoke years of upcoming torment. Prancer stumbled shamefully towards Santa's workshop. It is obvious that we have a problem here, began Santa sternly. I don't know if any of you recognize Vixen in his, uh, her current condition, but it seems as though I have been fooled. We have a transvestite reindeer in our midst. Santa paused, gesturing towards the haughty and pregnant form of Vixen, still wearing her prosthetic antlers. I cannot condone this sort of activity, and have reached several conclusions. The atmosphere was tense, as every reindeer present waited expectantly for Santa to continue. He did not keep them waiting long. Vixen, he shouted in a commanding voice, you are herewith expunged from my team. You may reside with the other reindeer, although their opinion of you I will not try to alter, but you shall never again pull my sleigh. Go now from my sight. Santa waited while Vixen strutted defiantly from the workshop. And take off those horns, he added in a disgusted voice as she neared the door. Vixen reached up with a hoof, removed the horns, and threw them at the feet of Prancer. She then left without a word. Prancer, shouted Santa, I know not what your involvement is with this strange and deceitful affair. But it is plain to me that you are far from blameless. You shall provide for the needs of Vixen's fawn when it is born. Santa paused for a moment, as though carefully considering his next pronouncement. You may remain on my team, but you will have to apologize to each and every reindeer that attended your mating ceremony. The problems you have created with Rachel and her family are yours to solve. Yes, Santa, said Prancer meekly, a defeated look on his face. Now go home, said Santa, and let us never speak of this incident again. We are Santa and his reindeer. We must comport ourselves with dignity at all times. I never wish to have a meeting of this nature again. Am I understood? Yes, Santa, replied the seven assembled reindeer hastily. Santa watched with a smirk as they all crowded in the doorway, none wishing to be the last to leave. It was good to shake them up once in a while to remind them who was boss. After the last of the reindeer had left, he grabbed his pipe, slowly packed it, and sat down in his overstuffed red leather chair. The solution was not yet complete. Jacob, asked Santa. A small elf strode forward in reply. Yes, boss, he answered. Are any of the other reindeer trained at all in sleigh pulling? Santa asked wearily. Well, Jacob commented, there is Rudolph. Although he does have a rather unsightly no situation that we'll have to deal with. Santa paused and grimaced, a mental image of said unsightly nose coming unbidden to his mind. Stick him in the team in place of Vixen. Instruct the other reindeer to leave him alone. Maybe call him a few names. That'll make us look like the good guys for putting a handicapped reindeer on the team. Yes, Santa, intoned Jacob, beginning to make notes on a small pad. And Jacob, Santa asked again, now walking towards the door. Yes? See if we can't get government funding for employing a handicapped reindeer, will you? I'd like to get a big screen TV for the workshop. Yes, sir, responded Jacob happily. Epilogue. So, Dad, is that why Rudolph got added to the team? Yes, son, the father responded in a voice that was desperately trying to sound comforting. Whatever happened to Vixen? asked the boy, curious and still somewhat innocent. No one really knows, son. But that is why Vixen, which was once a boy's name, now means a sexually devious and promiscuous female. You be sure to keep the story to yourself, son. I will, Dad. You've read the book, now see the movie! Vixen, the untold story, starring Rachel Wardrobe as Vixen, Mr. Ed as Prancer, Dom Cottage Cheese as Santa, and introducing Nikki the Wonder Dog as Rachel, directed by John Carter of Mars. I laughed, I cried, I shot flaming sand out of my ass. Satan, Hill's Ninth Level. I didn't say it shouldn't be made because it wasn't true, I just said it shouldn't be made. You can bet that John is getting cold this year. St. Nicholas, North Pole Elf. If you never see another movie, you'll never see this one. Al Gore, who needed the work. If you want to torture your own friends with this, Vixen is available as a PDF on DriveThruRPG. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this mess of a tale. So if you feel like publicly being associated with this video and with this story, please drop those thoughts in the comments below. I'd appreciate it. 
And if you enjoyed this sordid tale, I too enjoy people liking and subscribing, so you know what to do. And I thank you for your time, and that you chose to spend it with me and with Christopher Clark's tale. As we dear, dear friends part for now, I wish you nothing but the best Christmas you can possibly have. Thank <laughs> you.